Devontae Adams, his rele- his ability to get off the line of scrimmage separates him from anyone, period. Period. There is no question this guy is the best, will remain the best, as long as the- he and Derek Carr continues that chemistry that Wilds so pleasure, uh, pleasantly yeah. showed college us stats. that they had in college. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to remain the number not- one guy. Time. Time out. Go ahead. Time. Ryan. That was Broussard. <laughs> that was not me. I did not oh, put yeah, that you're traffic right. on the show. Oh, I'm you're sorry right. About that. that was you know, I will take a lot that of arrows, group. but not ones meant for Broussard. Goodness gracious. <laughs> okay, that's Broussard right. You're right. You're, you know what? You're right sorry, about that, Wilds. I, or, I also thought that was you. I, you. Most of our really, really bad graphics are yours. Felt like something you So we do. just associate it with yeah, that. Yeah, but not that, that one. Was, that was Brew. <laughs> Brew had that one and the uh, Jimmy G <laughs> win percentage one. All right. So here's the thing. I, I agree that body of work should count for a lot. And the idea of I need you to see you do it over a longer period of time. When it comes to, you know, things like who's had the better career and Hall of Fame stuff, all of that. But to me, when when I'm asked the question of who is the best at position X right now, for I'll give you a good for instance. Right now, this moment, if you have Joe Burrow ahead of Tom Brady, I think that's totally fine. Even though Brady's the greatest quarterback ever, and Burrow, we've only seen him do it for the you know one healthy season. If you say, I think in 2022, Burrow's going to be better than Brady, I think that's fair, which is why I think this is fair, Wilds. I think the best receiver in the NFL is Jamar Chase. I, I understand Devontae Adams has done it longer. I get that and I respect that. Tyreek Hill's done it longer. Cooper Cup's done it longer. And Cooper Cup's been, was, you know, won the triple crown in receiving last year and was awesome the year before. I think Jamar Chase has every single element you want from a receiver. And I think strikes, at least to me, strikes a little more fear than even Devontae Adams does. I think Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson's awesome. And I'd love to see Justin Jefferson with a top flight quarterback instead of, you know, average-ish quarterback Kirk Cousins. But I think Jamar Chase is the best receiver in the NFL. Okay, but Jamar Chase had an unfair advantage because he was hooked up with his college quarterback. But now Devontae Adams from the top rope, he's hooked up with his quarter, college quarterback. So he's back in the lead. Um, Greg, I'm going to go with you, Devontae Adams. What, what I think is the most interesting in this conversation is that almost every wide receiver says Devontae Adams. You say Devontae Adams. Brandon used to talk about Devontae Adams. Cooper Cup talked about Devontae Adams. Ocho, uh, on IG that you referenced, said he cries when he watches Devontae Adams release. So my question (laughs) is this. How come his numbers aren't like last year, aren't like off the charts better than everybody else? Because it seems like the consensus is it's so obvious, so obviously Devontae Adams, but like, ah, Mike Evans had more touchdowns. Like Cooper Cup had like 450 more yards. Why do you think that he needs to get his numbers? Uh, I mean, they're great. Don't get me wrong. But there seems to be a gap between what everyone says he is and the numbers where he's statistically <clears throat> alongside other guys. Well, I, I would just throw a dart at this and say possibly because every defense in the National Football League, when they play the Green Bay Packers, their first prime primary uh, task sure. is to stop and eliminate 17 period period if we can try to eliminate them and the green bay packers have more ways to win so you don't just have to give it to Devontae adams but for me nick i'll push back on you with this jamar chase excellent guy and i'm all about you know guys doing it right now and and not so much it having to be about a long tenured run of success but if you are the champ and you have success and all the league knows and recognizes that we got to take you away as as a rookie coming into the league you have an advantage because you don't have that type of perception you build that you maintain but okay you don't you didn't dethrone me just because you have more yards and just because you're getting more deep threat opportunities all of this jamar chase is phenomenal i love what he does but 
Devontae Adams would have had to I get completely what fall off for me to just say, oh, yeah, Jamar Chase. Well, and gotcha. listen, the Bengals, I think, had a deeper receiving core than Green Bay. So while Jamar was getting doubled a ton, you know, the famously in that game against the Chiefs, the regular season game, not the playoff game, the Chiefs, ref, you know, weren't, wouldn't double Jamar, and he just uh, annihilated them because of that. But the reason they wouldn't double him was because you have to deal with the other weapons the Bengals have. I have a different theory I want to toss to Greg quickly here, and I know we have to move on in a moment. But a theory about uh, Devontae, because I think Wilde's point was Devontae Adams has unbelievable numbers. But the way he's talked about amongst his peers, you would think it would be a numerical separation like Rice had with the, you know, Michael Irvin and CC and the other guys in his era where it's just every year he's the best at everything. I think this is where Rodgers, and Greg, tell me if you think I'm crazy here. Obviously, Rodgers helped Devontae immensely. But of all the other, of all the quarterbacks, Aaron is far and away the most cautious. He's, it's why his turnover numbers, his interception numbers are the lowest in league history by a mile as far as interception percentage. So I think there are, there are guys that whether it's Stafford to Cup or Mahomes to Tyreek or Burrow to Jamar, where if it is 50-50, it's like, ah, I'm going to throw it up there. I think Aaron is the least likely of any great quarterback in the league to throw balls that could be intercepted. And I wonder if that has depressed some of the eye-popping yardage numbers for Devontae that Wilds is talking about, Greg. Uh, a little bit, but I think more, more even to that point of you bringing up Aaron, I think when you talk about an elite quarterback and your receiver starts to kind of either match that level of concern from when it comes to opposing defenses and defensive coordinators like we heard Devontae Adams becoming like is is he the reason why Green Bay is so successful is he making even Aaron Rodgers so successful like don't get me wrong Aaron Rodgers is well all, he's a hall of famer come on now like he he's made Devontae Adams great Devontae has made him great but he has had a plethora of receivers come before Devontae and none of us None of us, myself included, would, would, would any one of you or anyone say, oh man, they they were better than Aaron or that was the reason why Green Bay was successful because of that player. You can say that with Devontae Adams and he's playing alongside Aaron Rodgers. All right, let's talk some big blue now. New head coach Brian Dable said all the Giants regulars will play preseason game number one Thursday night against the New England Patriots. Good opportunity to get acclimated to the new systems on both sides of the ball. Wild's big proving year for the Giants. Any chance they can shock the NFC East? I hope so. I quietly root for the Giants. Granted, they beat oh the Patriots twice in the Super Bowl, but still, I quietly. How many I teams do you have? All your teams. I like Seven. sports. Lock Why? me up in prison. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I only like the Chiefs. I root against all other teams. No, I root I for like the Giants, sports. man. Such a <laughs> what do you want me to do? So here's the thing, Greg. Daniel Jones has got the weapons. You got Kenny Galladay. They spent a bunch of money on Kelly, Kenny Galladay. They got Kadarius Tony. They dropped him in the first round. Now, he only played 10 games last year, but he is my sleeper pick for a breakout year, and he's the key to Daniel Jones' success. We got this little piece of tape. Ooh, I'll take it. Odell-esque? Not really, but I count anything to the sideline as Odell-esque. It just gets people going. Here's the other thing. Last year, he had a, let's say, didn't thrive under Joe Judge's leadership. Put some stuff on IG. They said, ah, this is kind of lame. Kind of had some up and down here. Didn't catch a touchdown. Now Brian Dayball comes in, and, and these are the reports from the New York Post, which is, it sounds silly, but I actually think this is legit. One is, he would send his rap music to Brian Dayball, and Brian Dayball would give notes on it? I didn't know that was even part of his purview. And then the other day, to his surprise, they started playing one of his tracks at practice, and he really appreciated it. Now, I know that sounds silly, but I just think it is a small indicator 